Hey everybody, welcome now to the Swing Quest channel for a live lesson. It's myself, Peter Finch, and my head of content videographer extraordinaire, oh, Jacob you. Broadbridge. Now today's lesson is going to impact a lot of you watching. It's about fixing a high floaty ball flight, turning it into more of a penetrating trajectory, but also how to take a divot, and how to get more consistency with your irons. Now this video we've teamed up with Hack Motion. It's a device that I absolutely love and it's gonna allow us to explain exactly how you can incorporate some of these changes into your own swing for a better ball flight. Okay, Jacob, let's start hitting some shots. Okay. And let's start talking everyone through like some of the swing changes that you've had over the past few years because you know, we've been altering things quite a lot. Yeah. Um, some things have been easy to implement than yeah. others. So first of all, explain a little bit about where you were at back in the day. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit back in the day now, probably a couple of years ago um, when I first sort of got some tips and tricks from you about my golf swing, if you <laughs> allowed yourself to look at my golf swing back then. Tips uh, and tricks. Tips and tricks. Uh, my you grip. Mean solid, solid, essential, yeah, yeah. incredible advice. Absolutely. Tips yeah. and tricks. Of course, of course I mean. I'm not a trickster. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, the grip, that was the kind of the main yep. starting point with, with everything. And I think that probably comes back to a lot of things with golfers is you, that's the first thing you'll probably look at with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, the grip was super, super weak. Very like, weak incredibly weak i just um, demonstrate very quickly about yeah so grip top of. top hand was you know really underneath the club same with then the, the um trail hand or the, the bottom hand was over the top as well yeah and what that was doing was just creating this horrific slice because club face was open at impact and it was just sweeping everything off to the yeah, off yeah. To the left hand side uh, so or right hand side if you just take that that weak grip yeah so just take it up to the top of your swing yeah yeah sure so what was kind of happening here with that slice as well because the club face was open if you were to come back on a kind of a neutral path through the ball, yep. that would have sent the ball miles off to the right-hand side. So yep. that was forcing you to move over the top, swing yep. the club left. So in an attempt to correct actual flight, uh, Jacob was using path more than actual face. Mm -hmm. So we then switch your grip. Yep. So we made it a bit stronger. Yep. I mean, it, it took... Took time. It took a long time. It did <laughs> it take a time. long time to do. Um, but yeah, so that that this top hand now is coming a lot more over the top uh, and getting that bottom hand a little bit more underneath as well. So I'm kind of getting into a position where I feel comfortable. I know it's not probably quite where it needs to be yet, but yeah. I'm <laughs> slowly trying to eat, trying to uh, eke it round. Okay. So um, yeah. take, take a couple of swings as well, explaining kind of what the process is yeah, you've sure. been through about shallowing as well. Yeah, so one of the big things as well that kind of maybe wasn't something I needed to focus on at the time, but because of that shot to the right, um, trying to create the opportunity of hitting it straight or even hitting a draw was dropping the club in and shallowing the club. Yeah. So one of the feels was taking it back and then dropping the club and also dropping the hands down as well. Yeah. So sort, sort of something like that. So and I started to take these sort of now. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that uh, these, shot that you these, just hit there yeah. a second ago. These, these, these big sort of, not necessarily even draws, like pulls to the, yeah. to the left. And I suppose that was kind of a, I've now implemented that shallowing a lot more. So yeah. I think it's not something I have to think about as much. And I kind of get it into a decent -ish position. It's, it's an interesting one, because like with the shallowing motion, one of the issues that we've had, because the what we'll, we'll go into this in a moment even though the grip has changed the club face is still quite yes, open yeah. at the top of the swing and throughout the motion so what happens is as the club shallows moving through impact to square the club face there's a lot of rotation of the wrists yeah a lot of flipping yeah a lot of this action and yeah. also like on the course we're not taking any divots no. at all no 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 because the club face is still open we're also adding in a bit of a scoop yeah. coming through yeah. so it's a scoop, it's a high ball flight, yep. it's a weak ball flight at times. And because you're starting to shallow the club coming more into impact, the bad shot is off to the right yeah. hand side. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of this is also for, for Jacob is very much down to timing. So because the club yeah. is shallow and open, like we can still hit decent shots with a lot of kind of hand movement, or hand rotation. Yeah. Unfortunately, when the timing isn't on, it's that weak shot. Out of the right off line. it goes yeah. and that's what we want to try and yeah, change yeah. now the reason that we're using hack motion for this video is this monitors wrist angles okay now we need to talk through a couple of kind of definitions first this first video that we're doing with hack motion it's going to be very very simple now we're going to use a few terms today now when you look at the wrist and the hand 
as you move up to this position, this is known as extension. So this is the wrist extending in its joint. It's also known as a cupped wrist within the golf swing. Mm -hmm. When you move in this position, this is a flexion. Now this is also known as bowed in the golf swing. Very roughly speaking, very roughly speaking, when the wrist moves in this position, the club face is opening. And when the wrist moves down into this position, the club face will close. So the first thing that we really need to say and we really need to get across here, this isn't a one lesson change that we're doing with Jacob. And this no. isn't going to be a one lesson change that you guys can do at home as well. It never is. <laughs> no, we've been working on this for a few weeks now. So if you get yourself set up, yep. right, and just take it generally up to the top of the swing. Yep. Now, what was happening is, yeah, basically that. So at the top of the swing, the wrist was coming into a huge amount of extension. It was kind of averaging out kind of between about 50, wasn't it, yeah. really, during these first few lessons. And then coming into impact, this position of, of extension was actually still happening. You'd, you'd love it to be there. <laughs> that position of extension was still happening yep. and it was probably half of what it was at the top of the swing at about 20. Now, this position here, as you extend it out to 20, this is what's happening when you get that flicking action yep. through the impact point. Yep. Now, what we are trying to do with Jake and what we're trying to do with your swings at home, if you're watching, is taking it up to the top of the swing, trying to get into a position where this number is not plus, it is more moving towards zero here, okay? Now, I wanna point out that this is an exaggeration. We mm -hmm. are not gonna get Jacob to zero. And at the point of impact, we also wanna be feeling like we have a minus number. Now, minus 32, again, you're never gonna get into this position, no. but we wanna try and get this a little bit more towards zero. Yep. Now, we'll throw up, like I said, Jacob's data from the first few sessions. We were 40 to 50 at the top of the swing and at impact we were at 25 in the plus extension. Yeah. So what we've been using, we've been using hang motion to get the feeling of having more flexion within the golf swing. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you take it up to the top once more, because this is basically what we've been working on. So rather than having this extended position, which opens the club face, we are trying to move it more towards a zero down number and flexion. So this is a straight left wrist, a straight left arm, and then the club face matching up to both those positions at the top. That's the exaggeration. And what we want to see is basically about here. Yeah. Like this. Yep. Okay. Oh, look at that. Plus one. Even got it pretty much bang on. There we go. Into here. Now, what we found through trial and error are a couple of things which are making this much better. Yeah. So again, what I'll do is I'll throw up like a consistent number here of your top of the backswing in your impacts, just to show how much it has changed. Yeah. It's been pretty remarkable. Yeah. So take it up to the top of the swing. With the exaggeration that we had, was that your left arm was very straight yeah. at the top of the swing. Yeah. Now what that allowed Jacob to do is as he extended the left arm, this got him an isolated feeling within the wrist. Again, this is very much personal preference with Jacob, but straightening this left arm allowed this position to become a little bit more simple. To get the feeling of a top of a golf swing like this is very difficult. This is where using the software has really come in yeah. useful. Now, the reason that we have to focus on the wrists for Jacob, this is a direct correlation to your impact. Yeah. So when we started using your seven iron to hit shots uh, the other day, yeah. we were looking at your launch angle. Let's have actually a look at what it was the other week. Yeah, so you're launching it at between 22 and 24 degrees on average. Now, to put that in context, <laughs> That's what a PJ Tour player will launch their pitching wedge at. Yeah. So I'm not not quite tall ready yet. Yeah. That's the thing. Okay. And that is because of that extended position within the left wrist coming through impact. Yeah. So at the top of the swing, that straight and left arm, the feeling of having that flat left wrist. And then the last feeling we had is that you were pointing the club out to the corner, sh swing was a little bit shorter. Yeah. Now you can see here from that this is a, a massively exaggerated position. When Jacob actually swings and hits, it's really not like <laughs> coming through the ball. We want to turn those knuckles downwards, almost like you're revving a bike. Yeah, that puts your wrist into a huge amount of flex there and pushes those hands ahead of the ball. And this is where we're going to start to get the ball first impact and then the turn. Yeah, and then, yep. and then so that flight comes down. Flight comes down. Yeah. So we've seen a ton load of these shots from yesterday. 
Let's start seeing some shots from today, <laughs> shall we? See what, what it's come like today. Yeah. So we're going to have that rehearsal swing yeah. and then a shot. Yeah. And remember, we want those exaggerated numbers. Yep. So, in range impact, that was fantastic. So, impact there, you were only plus three. Yeah. So, that feeling of coming down, yeah. hit the green as well, very good. Yeah. That feeling of coming down and having those knuckles turn downwards like this. That is definitely helping your impact position. Yep. We're seeing a bit more ball and a little bit more turf. Yep. A little bit too extended at the top though. Yep. So take your time with that backswing. All up to the top and pause. Good. And then those knuckles down. Good. That exaggeration coming through. And remember, we're seeing exact. We want exaggerations here. Yeah, the actual launch of that ball is coming down so much lower. Yeah. So your launch angle there, 16.5. Yeah. So that is a much better launch angle. And also, your angle of attack was down there for maybe the first time, <laughs> uh, which is always nice to see. <laughs> yeah. But at the top again, still too extended. So yeah. we are getting into a position now where you can feel actually coming through impact that position quite well. Yeah, I, I, the, the knuckle feeling I feel I can relate to a bit more i don't know why yeah. um at the top it feels a little bit harder to well it feels like i am doing it but that's kind of the point is that i'm so used to having that much flexion or yeah, flexion. flexion so i need to try and extension. get at the other extension yeah, but then yeah. trying to find that flexion so yeah the i mean it's it's the whole feel the real thing isn't it absolutely like, yeah yeah when you put yourselves in these positions and you can really see it that helps a ton yeah. and then also having that thought process of having those knuckles almost like if i was like to kind of graze them across the floor kind of thing yeah yeah um be a knuckle dragger be a knuckle dragger yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one time you want to be called that yeah that, exactly that yeah. fantastic <laughs> but the idea of getting this into a better position at the top of the swing yeah is so it's easier to do on the way down yeah like so there's not that big change it's just a you know more of a continuous position with those wrists yeah so to the top very good and then just try and replicate that position and allow those hands to knuckle drag as you move down. It looked like a very, very good strike, very good position at the top of the swing. And what's quite nice as well is what we're seeing at the top. 17, yeah, in range, so good. Getting, the, getting the, the greens, which is good. Uh, and again, like if, if you just have a, we'll throw up here a comparison of those numbers to what you were doing on average yesterday. Yeah. Even that is a massive change just from kind of working yeah. working with this kind of piece of kit. And just that immediate, you know, return of data exactly. as well is yeah, just yeah, yeah. amazing. Something that we also did, which was a little bit uncomfortable, but it, it kind of got the message across. If you get yourself set up, so using the screen, focusing on that, we take it up to the top and relax. And then what we're going to do with the second one is take it up to the top of the swing until you see that number zeroed out and then, then swing down. Yeah. Full on Hideki Matsuyama. <laughs> Very good. So the whole point of this drill is not to hit like fantastic shots, but it's to get that exaggerated feeling. Yeah. You know, that's what we want to see. Yeah. So now you've done one of those. Let's move that on to the full swing. Same rehearsal up to the top. So that's a huge exaggeration there. Yeah, maybe a little bit at the top, but strike-wise seemed good. Yeah. Extra distance again. Yep. So what we were doing yesterday, and this was really kind of working, is just with a pitching wedge, I'll give you that one. Thank you. Is we were taking these little half swings just to get the exaggeration, just to get the feeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift you down to a 100-yard target. Now, with a three-quarter wedge, and this is quite nice, with the three-quarter wedge before, you were averaging about kind of like 85 yards. Yeah. So now we need to move it up to 100 yards to incorporate yeah. this. Yeah. So what you can do is if you're changing your swing and if you're really trying to like adapt something, if you move to a higher lofted club, shorter shaft, 
it makes it easier because that club is more forgiving. It has more loft. You can get more confident with these feelings quicker. So, before you get yourself set up, and all we're going to do here is we're going to have a little very simple drill. So, get yourself set up. We take it back to halfway. And by this halfway point, you've got 14 degrees, 15 degrees of flex here. Mm -hmm. Move it into impact. So I want you to maintain that number. So it's gone extended. Yeah. Maintain, maintain, maintain. Good. And then see how long you can maintain that coming through the ball as well. So maintain it, maintain it, maintain it, maintain it, maintain it. Good. Now that little half swing, those same feelings on the shot. Yeah. Um, by the way, this uh, extension number that we have addressed, that's perfectly normal. That is just the way that the wrist sits on the grip. Ooh, just a little bit, just slightly out at the top, slightly out at impact. This is going to be difficult for Jacob and difficult for a lot of people because if they're used to having an extension, if they're used to having a flip at the point of impact, to actually maintain that position coming through, yeah, that is not natural yet. No, no. That's it. Just those little swings. Ooh, Couple of greens. Closer. It's always nice doing a drill like this as well because what it allows you to do is practice a a shot that you can use on the course. Yeah, yeah. Like you can use a hundred yard little low drilly wedge. Little punch, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's it. Pretty good. So that's what we want to see, those two ticks. Yeah. It's that instant feedback that we're looking for here as oh, well. Oh, yeah, that's, that's it, the perfect. At, at the end of the day, like, I'm obviously, you know, not going to have the patience to stand behind you all this time. No, not many people will. <laughs> so here, then maintain, 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 maintain. Big exaggeration, you're not going to get here, but feel like you are. Okay. Oh, close, very close. And look at that as well. Yeah. That's the same length swing, and you just punch that through the green. Just because of that extra... Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, the extra speed of the ball, because you're coming in, you're reducing your dynamic loft. The yep. launch angle is coming down. Yeah. It's really good. So what we'll do is we'll switch back to the 7-9. Just clip a few more away because we do want to keep mixing it up. You know, even though this is a bit more of a, a block practice, we do want to make sure you are doing this with different clubs. Yeah. Now, this is very much specifically with your irons. Like, this is going to feed through to your driver swing, but we are going to need a little bit more info on that. And we are going to be doing more lessons using the hack motion as well for chipping, for putting, for loads of different areas of the game. It's certainly something I need to take advantage of as well. Good. So same exaggeration. Let's just clip one away. Just short ones again? Absolutely. Wow. It's crazy because like that type of ball flight, that type of shot is something that like really haven't seen you have. No. Like that is a that is a new ball flight. No. And I mean I've I've hit it that far off my old swing trying to hit it hard yeah and i'm taking it back to halfway honestly it's like it's very very different it's really good to see okay now try and like move that into a bit of a fuller swing that was very very good you've got top of the swing there was great impact you want a little bit of a hot streak <laughs> five correct impacts in a row can we have another one so guys if you're enjoying this video as well make sure you hop down into the description below if you want more information on hack motion we've got a little kind of link you can use down there just to have that ability to kind of consistently train something and have that feedback. And this is very much like the starting point of this app and this software. There's a lot more to come. Mm. If you haven't subscribed to the Swing Quest channel, make sure you do that now and hit that like button because I think, quite frankly, Jacob deserves it for grinding away in this <laughs> oppressive heat. Wow. Genuinely, genuinely really good, that. <laughs> Mate, fantastic. Awesome. Good work. Good work. Now, I do want to say again, word of warning. We have been working on this for quite a few weeks. Yep. And we're going to have to work on it 
for quite a few more to make sure this is nailed down. Remember, this is about practice, this is about repetition, and it's changing a habit of quite a long time. So if this is something which sounds familiar to you, if you do struggle with those wrist movements, using the exaggerations, using feedback, absolutely crucial. So guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya.